So I decided to build a press brake to bend aluminum like this. Uh, but instead of being a small piece, it needs to be a 20 foot piece. So that means a really big press brake that has to be very powerful. And so a question is, well, how much force will I need to apply on a 20 foot piece of aluminum? And so today we're going to look at that. So here's an eighth inch piece of aluminum and we're going to put it in this little tiny press brake from Eastwood and you can see how this works. Uh, this is a punch. It's kind of a V-shaped thing and it presses down on this aluminum into this die which is also a little V-shaped thing and then it bends the aluminum. And the amount of force required to bend the aluminum is related to the thickness of the aluminum and the width of this, this uh, die. The wider that is, the easier it is to bend. So that's what we're going to use to bend this. And it's driven by this 12-ton hydraulic bottle jack that's part of this Harbor Freight 12-ton shop press. And it turns out we can actually use this setup to figure out how much force is being applied. Uh, a bottle jack is basically just a leverage machine and when I move this handle, it turns out this handle moves up and down 18 inches. And when I move the handle, uh, this moves 0.055 inches. So I measured both of those. And the ratio of those things shows me my leverage. And here you can see that 0.055 inches per pump versus 18 inches. And the ratio is 327. So that implies approximately that if I press down with one pound of force here, there's 327 pounds of force going to be generated here. So all I need to do is take some weights like this and dangle them from this handle and see how much of those weights are required to bend this aluminum. So that's what we're going to do. Also it might be worthwhile just looking at this bottle jack to see what a bottle jack actually is. And it turns out this part is a tank and it's a tank that holds oil and you can see back here that's a plug and you know it looks like uh, something else but that's all it is it's just a plug and if you pull that out you'll find that there's oil in this tank so this is a tank and inside the tank there's this ram and this thing is just a pump that pumps oil from the tank into the ram so they could have built this as a two-piece thing where you have the ram here, the pump, and then a tank sitting off to the side, but it's just easier to put it all into one convenient little bottle. And so that's really what a bottle jack is. Okay, so here you can see we got this uh, aluminum is just pinched in there. It's just starting to uh, bend. And uh, now here's the handle and we have this now familiar coat hanger uh, holding five pounds of weight. And so the five pounds of weight isn't quite enough to get this to bend. Uh, so we'll hang another two and a half on here and see what happens. Oh, that does it easily. Okay, so seven and a half pounds uh, was enough to get that to go. And so you take the seven and a half pounds times 327, and uh, that's the most force that was being applied on the aluminum. So let's keep uh, bending this a little bit, a few more times, because right now the uh, aluminum is still uh, probably in an elastic deformation mode. So it's just going to snap back. So it's going to get a little bit harder to bend as it bends further. So we got to bend it a little bit more uh, before we figure out what the maximum is. So we pumped it a few ton more times and now you can see, yeah, it's really starting to bend in there. Uh, so where are we? Uh, here we've got seven and a half pounds hanging off here and it's not uh, moving. So we'll try to uh, add another two and a half pounds and see what happens. Oh, and there it goes. Okay, so uh, that was easy. Uh, so we're seven and a half pounds still. It's not really not getting much worse than that. And here we are from a different angle. You can see what's happening. I've got the 10 pounds here. And uh, let go and yeah, it drops. So it's taking 10 pounds, 10 pounds. You can see it's really starting to bend there. You know, so it's more like eight pounds. Eight pounds get it, gets it to go. Keeps going. You can see over here, yeah, that's spent quite a bit. OK, 
Okay, so that's really pretty easy. So we're going to call that, uh, just to make the math really super easy, we're going to call that 10 pounds on a 6 inch piece of aluminum. Um, and we multiply that by approximately 300. So we're going to say that the downward pressure there is actually, in rough numbers, 3,000 pounds on that piece of aluminum. Uh, so it turns into about 6,000 pounds a foot to make this happen, uh, which is uh, 3 tons per foot. So if I have a 20-foot uh, long section of this, then that turns into 60 tons. So we need 60 tons to make this happen. And here's the bend we just made. It looks kind of nice and round from the outside and a little sharper on the inside where the punch was, uh, you know, it's kind of sharp, so it's just punching in there. Okay, now we're going to try this quarter inch piece of aluminum. Uh, the previous piece was an eighth inch, so uh, theoretically this, well, we know that this will be more difficult to bend, so let's see what happens. So here you can see the quarter inch aluminum is starting to bend just a bit, and we have 25 pounds out here, and it's not moving, so uh, it's taking quite a bit more weight to get the quarter inch aluminum to bend. So we'll put another, so this is a 10 pounder, so now we're up to 30 pounds on here. Oh, it drops pretty easy. So we'll just call that 30 pounds, just to make math easy. So when you double the uh, thickness, it approximately triples the force required and, uh, and then it turns out well this piece of aluminum is only about four and a half inches wide where the other one was about five and a half inches wide so you know just for uh, sake of caution we could say that it actually takes about four times as much force to bend this quarter inch piece of aluminum as it does the eighth inch thick piece So these are all kind of rough numbers, but online I found a uh, calculator that AccuPress has and I just plugged in the numbers and they said 3 tons per foot for the eighth inch, which is what we calculated here, and then uh, they've got 13 tons per foot for the quarter inch, and so I'm saying you know, 12 tons and they say 13, so actually this is, this is pretty close. I'm coming out to about what they say uh, the, the force will be required, and AccuPress is a press brake manufacturer, so they probably know what they're talking about. And incidentally, uh, here's your uh, nugget for the day, if you stay to the end of the video, is you can use this method to weigh your car or your trailer tongue weight. For the trailer tongue, in order to be kind of accurate, you might need a jack that has less than a 12 ton capacity because your accuracy is going to be related to that, uh, the amount of tons it is. So, you know, if you have a one-ton hydraulic jack, that might be uh, a little bit better. You might end up with a more accurate number. You know, we were just looking for something approximate here. And uh, on a trailer tongue, you know, the difference between, say, 600 and 1,000 pounds, that's, uh, that's quite a bit. So you might need more accuracy there.